Good morning, His Church London. Good morning. And every other person that's joining us today, we're so excited to be with you. We find it's actually a real big privilege when you guys log on and you listen to this and you know, it's not the ideal way of connecting, but we get to connect. And so we get to still share what we believe God is saying and we're praying for you and we'll keep praying for you. And so um, thank you for joining us. I'm just waving at everyone joining us. Hello, Tony, who's on Facebook. Facebook doesn't have a little wave button. Mm -mm. Should have it. <laughs> it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful that you're here this morning. And so we have our special guest. Uh, very special. Very mm -hmm. special guest preacher, pastor, mm -hmm. beloved with us this morning. And so Denver is also going to be sharing, which I think is really important because God's also put stuff on his heart. And he's working really hard. If you guys are working from home that are normally in the corporate environment, you guys are working extra hours. I just want you to know we notice, we see you, God sees you. And so um, we pulled him away for five minutes <laughs> to be with us this morning. So I wanted to share a thought with you this morning. Um, it's a scripture. It is a very, very well-known scripture. And um, it was meant to be a massive encouragement to a group of people who found themselves in exile. Now, what I'm talking about is Jeremiah 29. And while I was praying this week, God dropped this scripture on my heart on, on Saturday night or Sunday, and I was just thinking about the scripture, but it was specifically verse from verse 5, but I'm going to start in verse 11, and then we'll go back to verse 5. Is that okay? And um, this, the scripture that we that is probably the more familiar part of the scripture or the most quoted scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says this, For I know the plans I have for you. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And then so, so many of us stop there. So many of us quote that scripture and say, God, this is where we find ourselves. But it goes straight into, so you will seek me and you will find me. And when you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. Now, remember the context of the scripture is Jeremiah is writing to people who find themselves, like I said, in exile, not where they would choose to be not where they would wish to be but they were there and God was reminding them of a promise of their future and and promise to to know that he's got plans for them but in that place he's saying seek me find me in this place where you need to be reminded of my promises that I've made for you that that I've spoken over you he's saying seek me and you will find me but this is the scripture that that God actually put on my heart on the verse that he put on my heart on, on the weekend was build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters and find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there and do not decrease. Also seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. What a mouthful. This scripture just stood out to me when I was just reminded of that part where God actually says to these guys, he says, Jeremiah, I need you to speak to my people and remind them that they cannot just exist. Yeah. That we cannot right now in a situation or wherever you are, and you know what, COVID's not going to be around forever. So this is not just a COVID message. This is a how we do life. God's like, be intentional in living. You know, Jesus came to give us life mm. and life abundantly. Mm. And I feel that this scripture, that Jeremiah is actually um, encouraging the, the, the Israelites and he's is actually like, let's be intentional with the covenant that, that God has made with us. He said, be fruitful and multiply and increase in number that's the mm -hmm. the ultimate covenant the covenant that god made with moses i mean with abraham and with noah mm -hmm. and that's the covenant that we live under and so my encouragement to us this morning is that actually we will not mm -hmm. we would not stop living intentionally and the part that really stuck out to me mm -hmm. because of time purposes i'm only choosing one because if we had more time i would speak about all of them mm -hmm. but the part that st stuck out to me where it actually says god says to them whatever you do do not decrease. So wherever you find yourself today, mm. do not decrease. Mm. It's saying mm. that you need to 
think about future. You need to think about get married, have children, build relationships, build communities, invest in the, la the land that you're living in, invest in the relationships that you have. Keep your eye on the future because it mm. speaks about future generations. It speaks about children. Keep your eye on the future because God's saying there is a future in the midst of something that's so hard and the trials that you're facing. That is the reminder today. And so I want to say to you this morning that whatever you do, do not decrease do not decrease in your fruitfulness mm -hmm. in this season do not decrease in your relationships around like are you reaching out are you looking after people are you taking care of what god has put in your sphere of influence uh, do not decrease in the way that you're pursuing him do not decrease in faith seek him and you will find him in this season, in the next season, in the season after that, because the promise is there is a future beyond what you're facing today. Amen. And so it's not just a promise. What does my Bible say? It's not just a promise for personal benefit that, you know, that self-gratification right now, save me now. But it is a promise that there is, there is so much more beyond what we're facing today. And so my encouragement to you today mm. is do not decrease. Mm. Do mm. not shrink back and do not let the enemy just you know, cause a flat line in Jesus, mm, name. Jesus name. What do you want to add? I just wanted to actually, there was a part of that scripture that you didn't read that um, I just wanted to pick up on where it says um, in, in verse nine, it says, or oh, just before verse nine, do not listen to the dreams. Oh, sorry. Verse eight. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. And that's just at the back of that. And it's a lot of that is about, for me, when I read that, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there yeah. right now. Yeah. And there's a lot of the media, um, the politics, and it doesn't matter what politics you subscribe to. It could be um, left or right, you know. Mm -hmm. Neither of them could be right, really. Hey, so um, and, and you're being forced to pick a side. And I think, you know, God could say it's neither. You know, we've heard those scriptures where it's like, I want you to do, um, I'm not for them or for somebody else. I'm not for you. I am, I am the Lord and I'll do what I want to do. Yeah. And we've got to be listening to that voice that, that says that. And yeah. it's not the time to listen to the doom and gloom Absolutely. and to, and, and the media is very much, uh, whether you, uh, pro Trump or against Trump or pro Boris or against Boris or uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, you know, whatever it is, yeah. there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of um, just really, really uh, doom and gloom. But yeah. we've got to be that voice that is progressing and not decreasing, not shrinking. Yeah. We're not going to subscribe to that. And in uh, John 16, it says that <clears throat> if you were to give your allegiance to the world, they would love you and welcome yeah. you as one of their own. But you won't. But because you won't align yourself with this world, with the values of this world, they will hate you. And I think, um, you know, if you're aligned with, with something, you'll find some friends out there. But right now, we need to be um, aligning ourselves with what, with what God's saying yes. and, and, and listening to His still, small voice. We have that voice behind yeah. you, in your ear, whispering and telling you which way to go. He's like the wind. We don't know which way He's going to go next, but we've got to be um, nurtured by God and listening to what God is saying for the season. Yes. It's not a case of um, just just uh, shrinking back and allowing us to go with the flow okay i feel like uh, it's a quite a strong thing that we've got to yeah. be more now than ever not decreasing and tuning in and going going with god and um what i was reading something about moses yeah. you know and moses was leading his people uh through the wilderness and god told him to use his voice and speak to that rock and tell it to produce water yeah and out of frustration he he, he took a stick and he beat that stick rock, it, you know, yeah. and when we are and operating out of a, a res, response to what the world's saying, a response to what the media is telling us, um, when we're not listening to God, we might operate out of that place, out of frustration and emotion and emotion. Yeah. yeah. And just out of that um, desperation and just stagnation or well, all those negative things. But we got to be in tune with God and listening to what God's saying and be, uh, be creative in our responses yeah. or be creative in which way we're going to go. Um, God is the creator and he's got a pathway out of this. Absolutely. He's got a pathway for your next step. 
And we shouldn't be uh, responding out of that negativity. We've got to be leading our hearts, leading people, leading our family, Absolutely. leading our churches, leading yeah. our communities, leading our whichever way we go. And we've got to be in tune with God and leading our way through and out of this thing with the power of God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and something that Denver and I were chatting about as well mm. that ties in. I know it started with Jeremiah 29 and Denver was reading about Moses and reacting and, and stuff. And the thing that struck me was, is, you know, that God said to him, speak to it. Speak to this thing so that it can produce water. And, and some of us might see it as a... As a um, a separate standalone incidence but what we cannot forget is that it's the god who spoke the universe into mm. into being is saying speak into this thing so that it can produce and the stuff the the line that i felt that god dropped in my heart on saturday or sunday was actually what if what if we fell in love with life again mm. like we fell in love with living not the life that we create for ourselves in the what we want and what we think within our you know tiny little mindsets and borders but that what if we fell in love with life the abundant life and that i felt is so much bigger than just um you know we're always going to find the positive it's not it's the that creative way instead of re reacting emotionally to things and striking out and you know forgetting that actually when we come into agreement what god is saying even in jeremiah 29 he's like guys watch yourself don't shrink back be careful of be careful of coming into agreement th with things that that people are putting over you mm -hmm. and and actually what if we no matter which country I actually felt like it was a word over our nations and over where we we're even living and every nation I can see some friends that have joined us here we're represented from South Africa to the UK and whoever else is joining joining us but we've got leadership and what God says is like you need to make sure that wherever you are that you're actually committed mm -hmm. to living an abundant life where I've called you and where I've put you, whether it is a season or whether it is long term or where that's where you planted. He's like, I'm telling you, make sure that you are you are contributing to investing into the country and the nation and the areas that you're living in. Mm. And that is the same as how we're speaking. What are the doom and gloom prophets versus what is God and God's kingdom? God says, I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. And you got to just you know, take that into account so that we're not reacting to the things that we're seeing, but we, we're we speaking life into those things. And so the thing that I felt was, let's fall in love with life abundant. And you know, mm. something we were speaking about is as a His Church, if you're part of a His Church family, one of our core values is celebration. And you know, one of my main, um, my most favorite sort of things in life is encouragement. Like I love encouragement, but you know, celebration is beyond encouragement because sometimes you're like we got to find something to encourage somebody with but actually when you're living a life celebrating the abundant life that god has given us it extends to taking note of the beauty of creation around you mm -hmm. taking note of you know what it is I, saw, I said to denver it's almost like these little postcards you know when you go traveling and you go to these new places people buy postcards like a snapshot of the beauty mm -hmm. of that place and you know how many people we live in those places and we don't see the beauty that's surrounding us the 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 fruitfulness that's surrounding us the the gifts that's surrounding us but if we were to live I almost want to say postcard lives. I give people the glimpse of life abundantly when we live celebrating life, mm. celebrating the life that we get to live, you know, and I'm saying this because everything will come to challenge that. Like I said, I love the fact that oh, I, I understand exhortation, I understand the power of it, I understand encouragement, he's being encouraged into it, but it's probably one of the biggest areas that I'm challenged in in my own personal walk, where how I raise my children, how I speak to them. You know, the first the first church you will ever lead is the one in your home. Mm. The, the first thing that you'll ever be a pastor of is how you pastor your own home. Mm. And um, those are the things that we're challenged with our most because it contradicts, because the enemy will try and take that and twist it and bring it down. And God's saying, don't shrink back. Make sure you're being fruitful. Mm. You're being, you're increasing. Make sure you're actually seeing future. You're seeing that there's creativity in your words and that we actually start celebrating mm. life. Mm. Is that okay? That's okay. I think we've, we've sort of yeah, crossed, we, we, we came, we crossed and we were there, but so we, somewhere in there, God is speaking to you and we believe that. Mm -hmm. And so um, can we just pray for you mm -hmm. quickly? We just want to pray for you for your week and for whatever God has put on 
your pathway this morning. And so God, we just lift up these people to you and we thank you, Jesus, for every single life that's listening to this, that will listen to this, that needs to know today that God, you, you with them. And God, I thank you that even as the Israelites found themselves in exiles, Mm. exile father, and they were facing extreme hardships or trials, or even just that, you know, that, that, the lack of living life abundance. God, wherever we find ourselves, God, today I speak life mm. over people. God, I thank you for celebration to break forth within us that wells like fountains of yeah. life yeah. would just bring, it would just bring, just brim up and, and overflow. God, I thank you that we would start noticing creation. We would start noticing relationships. We'd start noticing generations. Mm. And Father, we just thank you that, that every person under the sound of this, this, podcast or whatever it is but God under the, the under your name on heaven and earth God they would they that you today would cause just a celebration to break forth in their life and there would be a creativity that flows out and when you say speak to it father we would speak celebrating who you are and what it is that you can do in and through our lives and so father we commit these these friends and these family to you and we thank you God that you are going before you are making a path for them your plans are plans of prosperity and hope and future over their lives, over the situations that they're looking at, and over the trials and the, the, that they are facing today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Hello, Jean. Welcome back from holiday. <laughs> um, we love you, and we hope you have an amazing day and week, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us. See you soon. See you later. Bye-bye.